Welcome back The truth be told I'm your host Hustle Simmons A.K.A. Your baby mama's Favorite baby daddy And this is where We come and break down The news Each and every week Twice a week That's right Twice a week We come to y'all On Wednesday Then we coming back To y'all on Friday Cause there be so much Going on And y'all know me man I'm the dude With the news On the tube You can use Let's get into it Christian Rock Blueface This has to stop we sick and tired and it has to stop Because see at this point I don't know if y'all trolling us or each other Christian Rock names the baby a junior And I don't understand what part of junior The concept of junior don't, 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 don't you get Christian Because see at this point Y'all are just having a petty war And we're forced We're victims of watching this nonsense What's going on? The baby has booking information. Come on. Blueface say he ain't seen the baby since you went live giving birth. Back in these streets because they missing me. Back at your freak because she missing me. I got that pack and made history. Back in the trap because they missing me. Check on the tracks and that shit to me. I say my rap because they missing me. I turn the two on the four, ain't no mystery. Your shit was right, so they missing me. I saw it. It was crazy. Blueface say he's willing to pay the booking fee to see the baby. So his baby can meet his brother, his other mother, and his daddy. Now, I don't know what you're charging for a newborn baby because at this point, we ain't doing nothing but watch the baby try to hold his neck up. And the you naming him Christian Rock and calling him a junior is wild. On concept alone. But the fact that Blueface appeared to have the upper hand all this time, and y'all thought Krishan was just this damsel in distress, and she was just getting worked over, who gets the last laugh? If it was a rabbit and it was a gun, who would be the rabbit with it? Because right now it's looking like Blueface took the wrong hand, fam. I mean, you got your other baby mama. Krishan to me looked better. She popped that tooth back in. Stop playing. Everybody going to get their whole joint done. We just need you to get one. Just pop that tooth back in. Boom, you bad. She's looking healthier. She, 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 she's still smoking Halloween, though. And I want to give her a motherfucking round of applause. Because even though we call her smoking, we ain't catch her drinking. And we know that motherfucker is just as much as a drinker as a smoker. So, hey, Blueface, I hope you figure it out. Krishan Rock, you need to get off that shit. But, hey, I feel you. I got a baby mama, too, just like you. Because sometimes, fellas, we do what? Pick the wrong fucking hand. We got to learn to lead this relationship shit off the internet. But it's hard when clout is such a powerful drug. It's hard when... There's so many sites and people who will buy personal and private information. And, you know, they just doing their job. It's on you to be on your P's and Q's, especially when you're doing what we do and put ourselves out here. We put ourselves out here to be um, broke down, examined, cross-examined, dissected. And I think it hurts the most when it comes from a family member or somebody you trusted. You know, like to hear your folks talk about you behind your back or your mom or your sister or your cousin or even one of your like best friends or close, close co-workers. Y'all know the segue coming, right? Let's talk about this Sherry Strawberry shit. Now, y'all may be familiar with her and we're not going to get too deep into the story because personally, honestly, I really don't give a fuck um, per se. Uh, but yeah. Shirley was on the phone call with her husband in jail. Now, let's, let's put a pin in that. I didn't even know her husband was in jail. I figured she was married, but I didn't know her husband was in jail. We, we, we got to dive a little deeper to figure out what cuz in jail for, but that don't even fucking matter. What matters was she was on the phone call with cuz. Talking to cuz, you know, doing a regular thing. I feel like she was just trying to make cuz feel like he wasn't missing the beat. He was in the know. He was up to speed. Well... Someone took it upon themselves to record the conversation. Now, we already know this ain't like back in the day. You ain't on no jail phone. Niggas got smartphones and the whole little shit. You know? And he probably take it. He probably, he probably, he probably the man in there. 
He probably the man. Yeah, like the chick read the strawberry letters. That's that's me. Somehow the conversation gets recorded where Shirley's telling him all kind of, you know, I wouldn't even say too personal, but it was about Steve Harvey and, and his wife, Margie. Now, we all know Steve Harvey going through a thing right now where his wife was cheating on him um, with the bodyguard and the driver on some Tasha from Power shit. Cheating with the fucking driver. How you, how you fucking the nigga? How you fuck in a truck I bought with my bucks? Is the real question. But we're going to get to that later. Shirley's recorded saying all kind of shit. You know, shit like Steve got all these stairs, big ass house. But the house so big, he out of breath when he walking up and down the steps. He, she also goes on to say that if Margie would have been there, they probably wouldn't have been able to walk through the fucking house, let alone come in. She kind of hint to the fact that I've known this nigga all this time and had never been to his house until he's going through what he's going through. And, you know, went on to say shit like Margie looks at them as the help or her as the help. You know, how she got a sauna and a massage ball and the whole little shit in the crib. That's crazy. What's even crazier is the nigga recorded the conversation. And you can tell he was kind of probing. But it sounded just like conversation. Me and my girl had these talks all the time where she tell them, and I'm, you know, I'm fake listening, like, for real? Damn, that's crazy. And then what happened? Wow. Wow. Like that? Wow. That's my thing. That's all of our thing. But he was recording the conversation. I had someone recording the conversation. I'm pretty sure he sold it to a tabloid or to some publication. Because um, Steve Harvey is a hot topic right now, especially with the wife. Um being disloyal, so forth and so on. So to hear, you know, his wife, Shirley, saying things like Steve intimidated, Steve scared of his wife, um, you know who run this shit, um, you know, he out of breath, like the nigga, you know, then she even made a joke, like, I wish I had it. somebody coming here to work me out, just coming over here just to work me, they coming to work, you know, and you know what's crazy, because you know that he, she got caught cheating with you going to really do the work me out analogy? That's crazy, Shirley. Wow. Dead ass. But let me ask y'all a question. When does pillow talking go too far? Are there rules and regulations to pillow talking? Is there is there a certain code to pillow talking? Because your spouse is supposed to be that comfort zone, that safe zone, that lets your hair down. If you got something on your mind, say it with your chest to the person that you know the best. But when, 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 when does pillow talking go? Was Shirley wrong for pillow talking with this nigga? Or was he just on some whole shit? Now, I know the comments going to say he was on some whole shit because he was. But, I mean, this nigga in jail. And, and shout out to all my niggas locked down and free the guys. But nine times out of ten, jail full of a lot of bad people. And you saying you don't know what he's locked up for and, and, and this is not the man you married, so therefore you don't know this guy at this point. And that's crazy to talk about Steve business when it seemed like everybody turned it on Steve. His wife, the bodyguard, the driver. Not his best friend and co-worker for all these years. That's wow. But you got to watch yourself. And you got to watch how you move. And you got to watch the things you do. Because this shit is crazy out here. And you never know who you can trust. You know, we want to we wanna be able to trust people. We want to be able to um, believe that we can have conversations and do things in and, and confidentiality. But sad case, the truth be told, we're not living in a world like that no more. Because if it's not somebody that's trying to profit off of it or get clicks and likes off of it, um, your own, like people own friends will record them falling and hurting themselves and, you know, missing the jump on a diving board and almost breaking their fucking neck just to post it on their Instagram or they or their Snapchat first. People watch people get hurt every day and record it. People watch tragedies and shit going on and record it. Motherfucker be on fire and that shit would be viral because somebody instead of throwing water on them, you picked your phone up. So we need to learn to put the fucking phone down when we're dealing with other people and sometimes with ourselves. The most recent need to put the phone fucking down the war goes to, you guessed it, my nigga Rasby. Give this nigga a round of applause. Give him a round of applause for being the wildest nigga to ever be in a boy band, period. I don't know who more fried, Rasby or Orlando Brown. Now, see, I would say Orlando Brown because the shit he say, but I got to give the award to Raz B for the shit could do. And it always be some zesty, spicy, hot taki shit. The world's spiciest tortilla shit. 
Ghost pepper, shit, the spicy is the spicy. I don't get you, Raz B. And at this point, I'm not really even trying to. I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck made you think that the world or the internet wanted to see you doing your, your one-two step and your black Spider-Man thong, Speedo. You must have thought you was in the MC Hammer Pumps and the Bumps video. First of all, it looked like you was in a college dorm. You know what I mean? And y'all remember what I said about people trying to record people going viral? The only thing that's ranked higher than that is people recording their self looking for a viral moment. I mean, look at me right now. Hey, hopefully one of these clips go viral. But I'm not doing no dumb shit for it. Raz, I don't know if this is a cry for help. And you know what's even crazier, though? No, I, just, I, just, I just thought about it. When Britney Spears got on the internet and did her little dance, the world went into a frenzy. Raz be doing and the shit go viral, niggas. All y'all, all we all, even me, all we talk about is zesty, spicy. We ain't really cry. This, this, this might be a cry out for help, for real. Because at this point, I don't know if these dudes are trolling or are these dudes being dead serious with the shit they doing and how they moving. Like I say, I don't know who's more fried, him or the That's So Raven nigga, Orlando Brown. And is it something with childhood stars? Because a lot of childhood stars do grow up and be flipped the fuck out. Be zany and cockamamie than the motherfucker. And a lot of times, we do judge them based on the time we knew. And a, and a, and a, and a time, mental time capsule that we remember them from. And I think we hold them to that standard. And I think it drives a lot of them crazy when you're used to something so early. And now, it's gone. I think at that point, you're trying to do anything to get their attention, to get those likes, to get their admiration. Good or bad. Good or bad. I don't, I don't think that they really, you know, it's just like when they draft players into the league and shit. They need financial coaching. They need money management. Um, they need to know about taxes and shit because they're not taught that. I think they need a deceleration course for these kids, stars. Now, unless you like a Justin Timberlake or Usher, Michael Jackson type, Chris Bryant. It's, it's very few people that can transition from childhood stars to adulthood stars. And I think if you have a rough transition or you don't transition or you get stuck in the middle, that's when motherfuckers start losing their mind. So, yeah, I'm going to pop my shit and I'm going to tell my jokes. And you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, um, Raz B got to be crying out for help. Now, will he accept the help? I don't know. Is he trying to make sure he get renewed on the um, bad boy shit? Maybe so. Because it seems like to be in that type of media, in that type of spotlight, be on them shows like that, loving hip-hop and all that shit, you got to be doing some real demeaning bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Salute to us and everybody that fuck with us, man, because that's one thing we pride ourselves on. That's what we don't do. That's what we not doing. That's what will not happen here. We're going to always pick the right hand with that. You dig what I'm saying? So, yeah, um... Prayers to that young man. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't going to judge him. That's what we not going to do. We not going to judge Raz B because, like I say, Cub might be crying out for help in a whole different type of way. You dig what I'm saying? Um, we not going to judge him, but we are going to talk about the judge that was not buying that shit that old boy was doing in the YSL case. Who am I talking about? Well, YSL Polo. You know, the young man that was... Videotape went viral in the courtroom, pop locking and nigga was tetting, rolling his and all that crazy shit. Yeah. Well the judge wasn't buying it. And I, see, as soon as I saw it, I said, bro, let me tell y'all something. As soon as I saw it, I said, bro is trying to plead insanity. He trying to act like he had his fucking mind. It was a genius play though. Genius plot. I can't lie. I had a homie um that actually got out on some acting crazy shit, man. You know what I'm saying? On the same shit. I think he like double, maybe triple murder. So it would work, but you gotta go more insane than that. That wasn't crazy enough. See, my partner was in there smearing shit on the wall, eating shit. You know, he coming there, the guards coming there, this nigga just sitting there eating, just eating shit. He he drawing pictures on the wall with shit. You gotta go balls to the wall, El Porio Loco, if you're gonna play the insanity card. And let's not forget you was part of a worldwide famous rap crew. You was young thug, man. Nigga, you know what I mean? Videos they got of your ass not acting crazy. Stupid ass dude. So you come in that bitch like you just hearing a song in your head and you just got to fucking dance, huh? And you, I mean, what did you think that was going to do? The judge said it's your stupid ass guilty. The jury, I'm sorry. The jury, you guilty, nigga. 
And the thing is so crazy, you would have had to have been doing that since day one. Since day one. For real, for real, when they came to get you, you should have been doing that. You turn yourself in, your mama should have had you by your shirt, drag you in that motherfucker, and you should have been doing that. You wait until right before the, the, the sentence and to try to go crazy. Nigga, you was a fucking nut. You did, you did. You was a fucking nut. And it didn't work. And now, my only question is, where does this lead thug, though? Because we got over 20 people saying it is a game. Okay. Now, YSL Polo is convicted of murder under the name YSL Polo that they've already confirmed was a game. <clears throat> I don't know how um, optimistic y'all are, but it might be case closed for Thugger Thug. I'm not going to lie, and I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I was real optimistic at first. But the fact that all they got to do is prove one, one nigga guilty of committing the crime under the, 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 the gang YSL to convict Thug of being the leader and the whole Rico shit sticks and it's over with. I think the guys that told knew that there was no way that no one was going to get convicted. Someone was going to get convicted. And if I'm up under this umbrella, no matter how good, I can get off. But if I'm, you know, I mean, I can't even get off. I might not get convicted of my crime, but even if I'm a part of it, it's like niggas in the BMF shit. It was niggas that never seen the dope. Or the money, but was a part of it somehow. I might have just connected the phone calls, or you know, you might have goddamn been the person that followed the person that drove the dope. Yo ass got it too. That should be tricky. And that's how they get you with that Rico shit. It's either you're gonna be with us or you against us. But be with them is to be against your man's. But I mean, in cases like this, what do you do? I don't know. I probably would have went on and took the plea and then been acting crazy outside. Yeah, cause they don't gonna give they ain't gonna give a fuck about that. All that that ain't gonna work in there, big dog. No, that ain't gonna work in there. Um, shouts out to you. Uh, I hope you know how to fight as good as you knew how to dance. No, I hope you know how to fight better than you knew how to dance. Cause that dancing shit was whack. That shit was ass. You know what I mean? That shit was ass. But um, one member, former member, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. We got to ask him. Yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all spam gun to ask him. Is he still YSL? Now the niggas getting found guilty. But one member or former member of YSL, Gunna Gunna, is having a great fucking week. I mean, shame on motherfucking YSL Polo. But uh, Gunna just sold out the Barclays. Doing Fashion Week in New York. Give him a round of applause for that shit. Y'all thought Gunna was done. I never th I'm gonna tell y'all I don't know I gotta I hope I'm, I'm gonna go on record Cause I might be wrong But I, I never thought Gunner was done Because I knew Gunner's fan base Is different Okay First of all To be able to perform New York Barclays Fashion Week That's Gunner's thing Gunner more like That's what we knew him for Even when he got busted We was like Gunner the fresh nigga The dress nigga You know what I'm saying We don't I, I, I never saw Gunner being that guy Like to do that type shit Not saying he's innocent Not saying he didn't know but I don't pick Gunner out of the <clears throat> room full of them. I'm not picking him as the one that's causing the menace. I'm going to pick the right hand when it comes to Gunner on this one. I also never thought Gunner would not tell. Now, I will say this. Gunner's whole fan base and type of music, even the features he was getting when he was at the peak, he can, he two, three songs with Chris Brown and, you know, his songs with Thug were the pop songs. Those were the songs that kind of crossed, that, that definitely crossed over. Um, I, 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 I don't feel looking at the trajectory of what happened to Gunner. First of all, let's give a round of applause because the nigga had the best album 2023. If you say he didn't, you fucking lying. Gunner had the best album so far in 2023. I know the year's not over. Drake supposed to drop and some more shit supposed to come out. But as far as albums, rap albums, yeah, um, Gunner definitely did that. His fan base is different. The music is hard. Um, Everybody disassociated themselves and you know with, with the whole thug thing, but Gunner kind of he stood there crazy because he stood alone and he didn't need a feature. And that nigga shit banging. Um do I 
feel the street code still exists. I'll say this. The street code exists if it exists to you. If you're still caught up in those principles, morals, lifestyle um, with those people. Yeah, it's going to matter like a motherfucker. Do the street code matter to somebody who's trying to do better? Who's trying to excel um, and, you know, upgrade their motherfucking life? Nah, it don't. I mean, once upon a time, I would never wear certain colors. But you got to grow, you got to elevate. I think Gunner was at a point where it was like, I could be street and hold it down. Or I could do what's best for me. Because at the end of the day, everybody has to do what's best for them. You living up to a code that somebody else made up for how somebody else will look at you is crazy to me. Now, would I snitch? No. But I'm going to take you a step further. I wouldn't be in a situation where I would have to snitch or be in a, a, a tight squeeze where it's me or them type shit. Not with one of my people, not with my rounds, not with my dogs. Never. Never would I ever as a young man, yeah. And, you know, at one point in time, I was one of them dudes that felt like it was a cold. You got to stick to the streets. Boom, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but that shit is dead. The world is changing. That's something that we're going to have to motherfucking accept, man. It's not the good old days no more. Not only is niggas not keeping it real, don't nothing happen to you if you do the flawless shit ever. And I'm not speaking on Gunner. I'm not saying what he did was flaw. I'm saying in situations that are flaw, the, the, the Shirley Strawberry letter lady shit. Was it flaw for her husband to know that he probably finna be gone and she really can't keep that nigga comfortable in jail? So he tried to make a, a, a play for some cake? Uh, nah. Now, was it wrong that he used her? Nah. Because, you, I mean, that's what you got to do what you got to do. And that's how people are. And it's, I'm not saying it's right. What I'm saying is you got to know when it's you with them, nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, they going to pick they self. Niggas always betting on the house. That's just what it is. In every situation, in any situation. And we got to stop looking at people crazy when you see somebody making that step, that change, or that elevation. You know what I'm saying? Like, last story, we out of here. Salute to Trap Boy Freddy. Now, I don't got a dog in this fight. <clears throat> and I'm only saluting him for showing and being a grown man. Now, now, I don't know if he was just being a grown man because the cameras was out. He was in front of a fucking arena. I don't know if he was being a grown man because it looked like it was like 10 niggas trying to get at that ass. What I will say is he handled it how a nigga with some sense would handle it. Because you could have been like a King Von ass pull out and just air the spot out. Would have been crazy. Cameras, you got a gun. You a felon. Crazy. You can't whip out. But he definitely had his hand in his pocket. And I ain't gonna say that he had a gun, but I ain't gonna say he had no gun. But allegedly, it looked like he had a gun. But the crazy part about that is the caption was look at this nigga running, pussy ass nigga running. He running. First of all, he wasn't running, he was walking at a brisk pace. He was, he was, he was walking a little brisk, but he was walking. Y'all make it seem like the nigga in a full fledged Hussein boat out this motherfucker. But what he supposed to do? Air the spot out, probably don't hit none of y'all, hit two other people, kill somebody. Or worse, don't hit nobody, whip out, don't even fire, get caught on camera with the burner, and now you gone. You even had to pull the trigger and you gone. Niggas got to stop getting tricked out of their spot. So salute to that nigga, man. That's how you know a real street nigga, man. I ain't going to pull this bitch out unless I'm going to bang it. You dig what I'm saying? But I can't really bang it because your man behind you got the fucking camera rolling. Like, y'all waiting on me to say cheese. Fuck out of here. You know what I mean? We got to grow up, man. You got to elevate. Now, one thing I will say, same with Trap Boy Freddy, same with Gunner. You do have to, in a sense, pay for past sins depending on the intensity of it. Now, for those who don't know, Trap Boy Freddy was also pressed by Mo3 people. And, you know, allegedly, Trap Boy Freddy allegedly has something to do with that. I don't fucking know. It's not my business. Um, that's something that even if you on your best behavior, you might have to answer for if you run into the right people at the right time. Um, it looked like he was going to a show, but it was, he was also walking in the front. I don't know. I really don't know. I do know that that came back around and that was a pivotal moment. That was a perfect pivot. Truth be told, that was the perfect pivot of him going from the, 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 
street nigga to the rap nigga. Because right after that, the nigga did three fucking shows, so sold out arena type shit. Got to love it, though. You know what I'm saying? So salute to him. Salute also to Gunner for, you know, <clears throat> sometimes you got to bet on the house, man. And sometimes you got to be grown and know I ain't had nothing to do with that shit, man. I hate it for you, man. But I got to go home, man. And instead of looking at me like a fake nigga for telling them I ain't had nothing to do with it, how about you be the real nigga you say you is and you tell them I ain't had nothing to do with it? Like, why do me being real got to be me taking the fall for some shit I ain't do? And if I, okay, cool, I ain't got to tell on you. But let's just say the rules was like, I got to tell on you for me to go home. Why you going to just tell on yourself so I can go home? So you want me to, so you did it. I'm supposed to, you know I ain't do it. But we both were like, we don't know who did it. So you don't go to jail by yourself, but you did it by, come on. I don't know. I'm older now and I got kids. I'm going home. That's just kids. I'm, I'm, I'm just, let's put that on the table. Truth be told, I'm going home. Got a nice set of titties waiting on me. You know what I mean? Got a nice little, you know what I mean, waiting on me. And I got kids at the crib. I'm going home. I've been elevated from that point. And that's what I, that, 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 that's what I want to tell y'all each and every time. We're going to take these stories. We're going to talk. We're going to laugh. We're going to joke. We're going to have fun. We're going to do the whole spill. Every time. And I'm dropping more. I'm dropping twice a week now. Wednesdays and Fridays we dropping. You know what I mean? Because there be so much shit going on. We might throw Sunday in there. Sunday or Monday. Might be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Probably do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, man, we got we to gotta, we gotta grow the fuck up. We got to make better decisions. We got to watch the company we keep, and we got to understand and, and recognize when it's time to make them pivots, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what we got to that, be held accountable for. That boy would have pulled out and started splacking the place. It would have been on him. Gunner out, selling out the bark Lake. That's on him. Shirley, you talking too fucking much? That's on you. Blueface, you got to book your baby. That's on you. And that's on game. It's your boy, Hustle Simmons, a.k.a. Young Hirsch, a.k.a. your baby mama's favorite, baby daddy. This is Truth Be Told, episode 002. I see y'all again on Friday, man. We're going to get into this fashion week and this VMA shit, man. Because we got to talk about that. Them niggas was tripping. We out. Get it.